What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Special treat today. I have a new podcast with the one and only Jim McD. We call it 50% Facts. Each episode, we take one topic, one question, we dive in, and in the first part of that episode, me and Jim explore that question without doing any research. Second half of each episode, we bring in one of the world's leading experts to give us the facts, to give us the answers. And today, we got a little sample for it. If you guys like it, be sure to give this thing a thumbs up, subscribe, check out 50% Facts on YouTube here at The Jim McD, and also on all platforms, iTunes, Spotify, anything you want. Link in the bio. Appreciate you. Have a great day. Um, so Mike and I had a discussion about a, a topic that just seems to always be hot, and that's keto diets. Yep. And... Uh, our feeling was this, that they have a place, but they, they're not a religion and that there isn't anything magical <laughs> about them. Uh, so share your thoughts and feelings on... Yeah, my first exposure to you was uh, one of the Google talks you did. Uh, yeah. And, and I, I not only loved how you spoke and ripped things apart because it made me laugh, but uh, just like the <laughs> style the style of video, uh, I, I assume it's on your YouTube, yeah, if people want to check it out. Yeah, it's. I think it's on my YouTube, or actually, I know Google has it up on on talks at Google. Yeah, it's so um, good. It's so good. You just sit there, and he has a big whiteboard behind him. And he just and these are maybe non fitness people. At least they're not in the industry. Yeah. And you're just taking sure. questions, suggestions, terms, gimmicks that people have heard. You write them up, and then you just scratch them off. Not only the, uh, the list on the board, but people's minds of of what <laughs> may or may not work. Uh, and so, yeah, keto. What are your thoughts? What what are maybe some applications? Um, and, and why is this stupid thing so popular? over the internet right now well i love that you guys called it like i think it was jim i think you said it was like a religion and uh, yeah like like i feel like that's how people treat keto like it's a fucking religion and and listen if somebody's keto they'll fucking tell you right away they're keto yeah like you know like you see like the memes it's like yeah like hey nice to meet you my name's jason and i'm keto <laughs> like i i don't like i think you know if i look at it so i i think i make the statement before but i remember one time on like a muscular development magazine this was right after keto was really popular in the bodybuilding world um probably 12 13 14 years ago when like dave palumbo was really popular um you know then all of a sudden george farrow was like the guru and the headline on the magazine was carbs are back and i'm always like where the fuck did carbs go like it's not like as a <laughs> macronutrient they they fucking disappeared and you know so I, right now i think like we're just in this phase and if you just look at like dietary advice in the world it's very cyclical and so Right now, keto is super hot. Then it'll be carb cycling again. Then mm. it'll be high carb, low fat. Then it'll be fucking vegan. And then keto will make another, you know, come around. But if you look at the beginning of this craze, you actually look at um, like it was some MLMs that, you know, started producing the exogenous ketones. And, right. and so that's, you know, anytime MLM happens, I mean, you look at like Visalis had their run. And then you look at Beachbody had their run and, you know, now you've got like the prove it's of the world that are backed by, you know, like one of the owners is like Russell Brunson, who's one of the best marketers in the fucking world. And so, you know, it's backed by like a lot of really good marketing hype. And so people just buy into it, you know, from the outside looking in, it's super simple. Like, let me eat egg, eggs and bacon all day. And um, I don't really think 99% of people that claim to be keto even understand what keto is. Um, I mean, like yep. when we look at it from application standpoint, it, it should in theory be like 70% fat, 25% protein and 5% carb. But most people are like eating so much fucking protein, you know, moderate amounts of fats and, and no carbs, which is not always keto. I mean, research is somewhat conflicting that, uh, you know, whether or not excess protein in a keto setup can contribute to knocking you out of ketosis. Most people will tell you, yes, I, I just read literature that actually refutes that. So I don't want to you know, make a blanket statement either way. But <clears throat> the popularity, I just think, is in like, you know, there's some ease of application. I mean, just remove a, a, you know, a whole macronutrient. But let's just be honest. Anytime the average person removes carbohydrates, they're not counting calories. They're not counting macros. You remove a whole macro from them. What did you do? You created a calorie deficit. Are they yeah. going to lose weight? Of course, they're going to fucking lose weight. Like, it's not rocket science. The same as intermittent fasting. Like, tell someone to stop eating for six hours, okay? So they didn't eat their cupcakes at 8 a.m. Um, they still ate their cookies at 10 p.m., but those cupcakes that are no longer counted in their calorie deficit or, or in their, uh, you know, calories in versus calories out is creating a deficit. So, of course, they're losing weight. Like, it, it's there's just nothing magical about it. Um, you know, you've got some zealots that have gotten behind it. Um, but then you dig into literature and you start to see, like, long-term effects and you see its application in in current training protocols and, and you actually see it becoming 
more detrimental than good. And so I'm not really a huge fan of keto in, in most applications. When you say more detrimental than good, what what particular things are you referring to? Yeah. So, I mean, agree or disagree, like Western or, you know, like current training modalities are at their all time high relative to intensity. Yep. Um, right. I, I think we can all agree on that. Like in 2019 training today is, is more intense uh, than most. I mean, we're seeing a lot of support in literature for more volume. Um, but you know, there's, there's very high intensity training proponents. And then of course there's the CrossFit influence on the world. There's the metabolic conditioning influence on the world. And so you're just starting to see a lot of these things. Um, all of those training intensities become glycolytic, right? At some point, like higher intensity training, metabolic conditioning, it's glycolytic activity, period, the end. Like we, we can't like dispute that. That's fueled by fucking carbohydrate. And there's not anything in the ketogenic diet that's going to support fuel from that or recovery from that. Um, and then you take that and you put it into a setting in Western culture today where, you know, things are like stress is at an all time high. Uh, you know, we're just stressed out as individuals. There's more traffic on the road. There's, uh, you know, we're sleeping less. We're over caffeinating. We are. Um, you know, just as human beings, we're trying to do more. Like there's this hustle and grind culture that exists in 2019. And so you take that, um, with, you know, an inability to really create a parasympathetic shift. Um, and all of a sudden you have a recipe for disaster with the ketogenic application to higher intensity modalities. Uh, one another topic we're going to cover in another podcast is kind of health versus performance. So I don't want to go too deep yes. into that, but yep. um, what's maybe some applications of keto? You know, I think we see as uh, I think you agree with us in a scene also like Instagram, YouTube, obviously one of the biggest influences on fitness culture right now. And a lot of these people that maybe have a lot of muscle or lift a lot of weight are now saying sure. that they eat ketogenic style diets and i tend to agree with you i think 90 to 99 percent of these people actually aren't eating that style diet and they aren't doing it for a long term but that's a different topic for a different day of what people <laughs> post and what they actually live uh what what are some maybe applications of keto that you might see is is it a health thing is it a weight loss thing is it you know like you said uh, i think there's fewer applications than people think it's not a broad stroke but uh there are some applications yeah yeah i mean i, I think if we were to look at anybody that you know again let's go back to like the whole charles poliquin statement of earn your carbohydrates well even that is you know somewhat misspoken um like if we use that as a foundation of understanding like where do carbohydrates fit in first of all carbs are a non-essential nutrient and any keto zealot will fucking tell you that right away <laughs> well you don't need carbs to live yeah, it's the no one, shit, it's the one macro we don't we're need. not disputing that yep listen we get it like you don't need it that doesn't mean it's not optimal and it doesn't mean you also don't need the fucking resistance train in your life yet you can Continue to do it. Yeah. So let's not go down. You don't need to shave your body like, you don't, head you don't to toe in tan either. Right. Exactly. So <laughs> <laughs> um, there's there's a lot of things that don't need to be done yet. You continue to do them. So it's a horrible argument, right? Um, but if we if we look at that as like a base statement and we say, okay, who actually who needs carbohydrates? Well, anybody under you know undertaking glycolytic activity, anybody that wants performance enhancement, um, you know, anybody looking to you know for those things. Then we look at people that are not training, people that just want to live longer. Well, research supports the fact that a ketogenic diet would would be helpful, right? There's anti-inflammatory benefits that have been shown from it. Um, you know, we know that that uh, inflammation is the one biomarker linked directly to longevity. Um, so anytime you're trying to control inflammation. Uh, a keto diet is going to work great. Um, you know, anybody that, that uh, you, maybe there's some, some pre-diabetes going on, um, a keto diet's a great start. Uh, now, I will say my stance on that has changed. Um, I used to say, like, that would be the place you definitely go. I think there's a short-term application there. Um, I think longer term, you should be working to actually build insulin sensitivity to tolerate carbohydrates. Um, some people will dispute me on that, but I, I can back that one up pretty good. Um, and, and, you know, again, like now I look at, I literally, right before I talked to you guys, I was on a podcast with a guy that was telling me in his, his off season of bodybuilding, he's eating seven, 800 grams of carbs a day. Um, you know, I would want to be testing like blood glucose there and, and making sure that, you know, while you might need that to make your quote unquote gains, uh, you know, at some point you have to be looking at your insulin sensitivity and your blood glucose. And so, you know, a brief ketogenic sample, a brief ketogenic phase to bring that insulin sensitivity back up, bring the blood glucose down, um, would be advisable. So really those are, those are the main applications. The one that I want to just straight up fucking bash is ketogenic in aerobic sports. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm so fucking tired of hearing the aerobic people be like keto, this keto, that like, 
when you understand physiology at a certain level, uh, yes, aerobic exercise is pri primarily fueled by fats. And so anybody that claims to be completely aerobic can get away on a ketogenic diet. That being said, aerobic athletes, like the key word there is athlete, not aerobic, um, at some point they are going to hit threshold, um, meaning whether it's anaerobic threshold or in their case, aerobic threshold. Aerobic threshold is primarily fueled almost solely by carbohydrate. And so when that carbohydrate is not available, now all of a sudden you're starting to have a massive cortisol response. Well, initially that cortisol response is great, which is why a lot of these aerobic athletes see success short term on the ketogenic diet, but long term they begin failing and they begin getting worse. Well, prolonged like over like having an abundance of, of cortisol elevation is only going to smash your HPA axis, which is extremely difficult to recover from. So you know, these athletes are highly misinformed saying that they're only using fat for fuel. Well, they might be predominantly in their aerobic setting, but as soon as you're competing, you're in a setting where you need carbohydrate. Like it's, you know, and, and there's so many studies that show that. Like you look at uh, like Ben Greenfield, when he did Volix 90% fat keto diet, he, he did really well in the Ironman, but then he fucking tested his hormone levels. They were complete shit. Mm. Uh, so, you know, you start to look at like, what are the real effects? Like a lot of people are using keto in like an n equals one situation and they're not showing prolonged application which is really where the real research should be should be done and like you said like uh if carbs aren't hindering your performance and they may add to your performance a little bit why wouldn't you get the extra calories in plus they fucking yeah, taste good I, so that, well, it's just like logically listen, you break like, down who the fuck yeah who doesn't want a carbohydrate the rest of their life yeah, yeah. like seriously I cannot, I, I will never meet one person that it's like, listen, that piece of cake doesn't look good. Of course it does. <laughs> or you're a lying, like, or you're a lying bastard, you know? Um, like, either one is okay if that's what you want to do with your life. But at the end of the day, at some point, most people are going to desire a carbohydrate. You, you know, gender specific too, there's another fault. Um, you know, and I don't want to just bash keto, but I think it's important that people understand, you know, um, in my experience, especially with physique athletes and people that are in calorie deficits pursuing fat loss, um, you know, females don't have as resilient of metabolisms as males. And I think it goes back to hormone profile behind mm. that. But if you're taking carbohydrates away from females for a prolonged period of time, we're starting to see compromises in insulin sensitivity. So you see girls going keto and then having an extremely difficult time reintroducing carbohydrates, let alone calories, right? Which is, hey, you might look good on the keto diet for 12 weeks, but long term on the keto diet, you've completely fucked yourself up. Like that doesn't sound good to me. Um, so there's there's just a lot of things that I think people need to be aware of when they're undertaking something as extreme as keto. Yeah, and like you mentioned, hormone profile, it's something we mentioned, uh, me and Jim talked about, is that some of these people – on the influence uh, side of things, uh, Instagram, whatever, whatever, even on the stage magazines, et cetera, probably are taking some type of hormones, performance enhancing drugs, and then they're backing yes. up these ketos or whatever diet or whatever supplement or whatever results. But the people following these influencers, whatever, I don't even know what to call these people in 2019. The world's getting weird, Sheep? man. Yeah, these people, well, all of it, all of it's fucking weird. I don't know what I even do for a living, but the people that follow these bodybuilders or, or influencers, fit spo folk, uh, they're most likely are not competitive uh, or competitors, yeah. and then they may not be on these performance and anti drugs. So these hormones obviously play a role in your metabolism, how much muscle you can gain, how much muscle you can spare in a diet. And they're just not maybe being as honest as they should, saying which ratio of keto and what ratio of PEDs maybe played a role in their success. You know, and we look too at the the population of people who are trying to compete in things, um, you know, aesthetic stuff or strength stuff or, or you know, CrossFit or whatever. But the low hanging fruit of all this are people who are overweight and sedentary. And uh, I think that the, the deal is that some of these people try a keto diet and they drop a bunch of water weight initially. And so they get that sort of, oh, wow, well, I got, you know, I can actually lose weight, that sort of confidence from it. And then I think that some of, for some of those people, that's kind of where it turns into um, the religion because nothing's ever worked before. And so this is working sure. for them now. And, and they're definitely. Like, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to sound like a zealot to, you know, when I'm going against all the zealots that I believe exist in the space. But it's like there are definitely applications. And, and listen, there are definitely people with sluggish metabolisms that have, uh, you know, insulin sensitivity issues that just naturally don't tolerate carbohydrates well, where keto might be an application for them to achieve the goals they're trying to achieve. Uh, you know, this, this whole conversation could be preceded by another conversation of just understanding what your goals really are. Right. Um, 
you know, I, I think a lot of people, and like you said, like we're going to do another podcast on performance and health. And a lot of people claim, oh, look at the health benefits of, of keto. Yes, they are out there. They cannot be disputed. But yet you're now saying, well, you know, it's making me healthier. So I'm performing better at CrossFit. Like, no, I'm going to tell you long term, you will not be healthier. Number one, because you're doing CrossFit. But number two, <laughs> because you're fucking not fueling CrossFit with carbohydrates or recovering from them with carbohydrates. So, so while you might see short-term, and there's actually scientific reasons why that works, um, but long-term, it will completely fuck you up. Yeah, and it seems like um, it seems like people just don't really read and plan around massive changes like that. You know, like, nope. uh, changes in diet and changes in 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 exercise and all. There's just like no, no real thought that goes into it, and so there's no plan for not being keto someday, or not, yeah. or you know, reintroducing some some calories at some point, some extra calories for whatever reason. There's just just no no plan in general. Well, Western culture as we know it lives in today. Um, yeah. we don't ever really think, I mean, people overspend money today. They, they don't think about the ramifications of their, of today's actions relative to tomorrow. I mean, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of fundamental issues, but diet definitely extends into that. And, you know, and that's, that's keto and otherwise, I mean, I would, you know, again, using the example of somebody consuming seven, 800 grams of carbs a day, if you're not thinking at some point you might need a keto phase to control your insulin sensitivity, uh, you know, that's sadly mistaken as well. So, uh, I think a lot of, and you know, we call it nutritional periodization, but a lot of people just very much live in the current phase. It's, you know, what we're recording this the end of April. So a lot of people are getting ready to diet for the summer. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee a lot of people are thinking of using the keto diet to diet for the summer. But let's consider the fact that you're going to go 12 to 14 weeks without any car. Uh, we lost you. Show up on there vacation you where you're going to consume. Oh, can you, can you hear me? You're going to show up on vacation where you're going to consume nothing but alcohol and carbohydrates. Yeah. And after after three to four months of no carbs, then you do that for a week of only alcohol and carbs. How do you think your body's going to respond to that? Pure muscle. <laughs> oh, 100. Dude, gains. Gains, man. All about the gains. So, yeah, I, I mean, it's, uh, you know, people don't think at all about long term, you know, long term anything. So just kind of to nutshell this thing, uh, short-term strategy, good for some people with with specific health conditions, um, have a plan. Always have a plan. Yeah. Always have a, a long-term, like, periodized plan, right? So even if you're, even if you're pursuing fat loss as it is today, um, you need to have an exit strategy from your current diet. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, once you've exited that, you need to say, okay, am I even in a place where I could potentially diet again? Like, Mike, I know you're going through your diet, right? Trying to get Coming shredded, out bro. of that, I guarantee you'll have – dude, I'm trying to trying to get shredded like you. But uh, you're jacked. But, hey, if you guys need to go to his Instagram, this guy's jacked. <laughs> mm -mm. He doesn't just talk the talk. There's dude, a lot of you, nutritionists. You're just going to disappoint a lot of people, man. They're going to go to my Instagram and be like, Mike is completely full of shit. Wrong uh, username. Uh, <laughs> yeah, dude. People are going to say, like, yeah, I'm just going to – I'm going to start posting pictures of you on my account. And then maybe people believe Prepare me, to but, lose followers. Uh, <laughs> um, but, no, it's uh, – yeah, I, I mean, you know, every dietary phase you go through has to has to be periodized. And we talk about this in the context of literally everybody we work with, whether you're a professional athlete, whether you're a weekend warrior wanting to get lean, whether you want to live forever, there there has to be some sort of flow and some sort of evolution to what you're doing. Um, and, and if that's not built into your plan, then you need to talk to somebody that understands that concept. Yeah, I think advice. I mean, obviously, if you have the money, always getting some kind of coach. And it, it is difficult, no, again, another discussion for another day, to find a, a qualified or, or good coach. But yeah. any kind of guidance is often better than uh, – because you, you have weird discussions with yourself. I even do. I've been in this thing for 12 years, and I still think, like, shit, man, maybe I should do some yep. keto. You know, like, everyone's getting results <laughs> on keto. Fuck. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, dude, I just – I literally just started my diet on Monday, and I was like, maybe I need to start, like, super low carb for the first two weeks. And, and I've coached tens of thousands of people. Yeah. <laughs> until, like, you know, stupid – Stupid shit still goes through my head. Yep. Um, it, it's human nature, right? I, I mean, I think that we see the the media and the propaganda around us. And here we are, three people that have been in the industry, that understand the industry, and, and understand the bullshit messaging behind a lot of it, yet we are still influenced by it. Yep. If we're influenced, like think about the people that don't have our knowledge and don't have our experience. Of course they're getting hit with it.
Yeah, we get it. Uh, Jason, appreciate you, man. Appreciate the time. Where can people find you? Yeah, dude. Um, Instagram at Jason Phillips underscore IN3 or online IN3Nutrition.com. Awesome. Uh, best two places. Awesome. Thanks so much.